welcome to everyone who is watching online. We had some technical difficulties, but we are alive and broadcasting live once again. Welcome to all of you. I have a very unique team assembled up here today. We are talking about growing up spiritually, and today we're talking about, in part six, getting spiritually fit. And yes, that is a tattoo that I am going to get on my bicep. I will pay you if you will get that. I'll pay for the tattoo if you'll put that on your bicep and go work out. And then I'll give you the little invite cards to keep in your shorts, all right? So I, I just note it to the finance office. I am buying anyone who wants to tattoo that. Hey Amen, let's get into the word. All right. Today we're talking about getting spiritually fit. And I have assembled six of the nation's top spiritual coaches and trainers to unpack their wisdom with you to help you grow and become spiritually fit. They're going to get you buff. They're going to get you lean, mean, in shape because we are here to pump pump you up. up. (laughs) And if you know what we're talking about, you qualify as old. (laughs) That was probably about 1993. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the body of Christ, and it talks about that that we together, all the members of Rock Family Church, form a body. And some of you are hands, some of you are fingers, some of you are an eye, some of you are an ear, some of you are the little toe on the foot. But every part is essential, and every part is needed. But what we want to do is we want to grow, and we want to mature this body of believers that we don't want just like a strong left bicep. We don't, we don't and the rest of the body's ailing. We need every part, we need the little toe to be like, flex, yes, I got this big guy, I can hold this, I am the support to this church. We need heel bones and ankle bones and knee bones. We need every part of the body functioning at full velocity so that we can reach, touch, impact, and fulfill the vision that God has given us to do. Now, in Ephesians chapter 4, it gives us a breakdown of what we, the spiritual coaches and trainers of Rock Family Church, are to do. Let's read it together. It says, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Our responsibility... Our responsibility is to equip God's people, you, to do his work and to build up the church. Now see, we're not going to be that pastor that says, you just stop standing. We're going to build you up. When you come to church, we want your, when you leave here, we want you to go, mmm, that was good. All right, we don't want you to go, oh man, I feel like, oh. no, we're here to build you up and to, and to build you up the body of Christ. Goes on, this will continue, we're not stopping, until we all come to such unity in the faith and the knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ, that he is our role model, and we're going to keep growing and building you and maturing you until you can become everything that God wants you to be. So here it is on your notes this morning. Our number one job as pastors and spiritual coaches of this church is to feed you, grow you, stretch you, and make you better. A better believer, a better husband, a better wife, a better son, a better daughter, a better brother, a better sister, better employee, a better employer. We we want to grow you and mature you. Now, the Bible refers to us as shepherds and refers to members of the flock as sheep. But we need to clarify something here this morning. We are not shepherding this cute little kind of cuteness sheep. That's not what we want you to grow and develop into. We want you to grow and develop into this kind of sheep. 
I mean muscular, head button, devil ramming, pushing back the principalities of darkness, full of muscle and power. Not some little meh, weepy little sheep. We want you to be mature and strong sheep, and my team is going to tell you how to look like that. I got to be in, I got to be in charge of the bell. <laughs> All right, I'm here to talk to you about diet and nutrition. How many of you have ever employed a nutritionist and this is what they're gonna tell you if you have or haven't. They're gonna say everything you eat, whether you lick it off of a spoon, everything you consume, if you swallow it, you need to make a food diary for one week and bring it back to me. That's eye-opening. If you're taking notes today, the big idea here is we are what we eat. We are what we eat. In Galatians chapter 6, it says, Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You'll always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. Verse 9, so let's not get tired of doing what's good. At just the right time, at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. So every day we need to make a habit of spending time with Jesus. Every day I have a habit. And I eat at least three times a day. That's my habit. Okay, sometimes four times. Sometimes I eat four times a day, but mostly I eat three times a day. That's my habit. But I also make a habit every single day of connecting with God. And that might look a little different for some of you than for others. But here's the thing. Even if I'm just praying over my meal, I be sure that I connect with the Lord. It's not just, okay, bless my food. I say that as well. But it is a time when I connect with the Lord. There's times when I'm in my car. So I want you to also remember, if you've heard of diet and nutrition fads, or actually they weren't even just fads, nutritionists and people came out and even the little pyramid, the little food guide, I mean, they, they've even reworked that. So along the way, I've heard them say, you need to eat low fat. Then they went, oh my gosh, I think that had way too much sugar in it. That wasn't a good idea to tell people to do that. So count your calories, at least just do that, count your calories. Then it was not just count your calories, then it's count your carbs. Then it was count your protein. How many of you ever heard of all these different things that you're supposed to take care of after you've done that food di diary to count these things? After all this time, let me tell you what I've decided. I've decided that even though I prepared the same meals in our home, what worked for my husband didn't necessarily work for me. So that's really tacky because his metabolism is like, it's just like on speed. My, now wait. <laughs> And mine is in like reverse, it's like backing up. <laughs> My point is though, what works for one doesn't work for all. So Dean might really enjoy one version of the Bible and I might really enjoy the passion, right? Or I might enjoy an audio version of the Bible. You might enjoy New King James. Some of you, the way you pray or the time of day that you pray or you pray for 30 minutes or that you somehow connect with God or you read for a certain period of time. I'm just saying it looks different for all of us. But how it looks different, it might be worship music. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. Just as long as you make time with God, that's what's important. So I have an example here. This represents... Sin. No, it doesn't represent <laughs> sin. No, it's not sin. <laughs> Cupcakes are not sin. <laughs> That was probably said with a little more feeling than necessary, but <laughs> I occasionally will eat a cupcake, but this is not what my diet is based on. So I might watch some TV. I might do other things that aren't helpful necessarily, but that's not my daily intake every single day, all day long. So you need to be sure that you feed your spirit. You need to be sure that your spirit is in tune with God, that you're listening to what God has to say to you, that your heart is open, that you're reading the Bible, that you are listening to worship music, that you are doing something every day to connect with God. So starve the flesh and feed the spirit. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good.
Is this on? Okay. Uh, so I get to talk today about stretching and prayer. And if you didn't know, this message is brought to you by Adidas. <laughs> this wasn't even on purpose. Like we just all showed up in the same outfits. And then the other guys, they weren't hearing from the Spirit. So pray for them. Just kidding. So I'm going to talk to you today about prayer and stretching. If you've ever worked out or played sports, you know that stretching is a very important part of that. Uh, we know from different studies that there's several things that stretching will do. For instance, we know that it will reduce soreness for after the fact. Can I get an amen on that? Uh, we know that it also reduces the risk of injury. And so we know that there are benefits to stretching. But if you're anything like me, sometimes you go to the gym and you just skip the stretching and you jump right into the activity or the workout. For instance, once a week or every couple weeks, I like to go play basketball with my friend Randy over here. Randy's one of our elders. He's on the worship team. And Randy has this, like, ridiculous ability to do these trick shots, like, between his le this weird stuff. And so he's literally, like, between the legs, laying it up and stuff. And so when I go to do that, my leg doesn't even get high enough off the ground <laughs> to do that. So I'm tripping, falling all over. And what you need to know about Randy is he's a lot older than me like a lot <laughs> I love you man but it's true he is so I know that if I'm gonna be playing basketball with Randy I need to stretch before I do that and then some of you might have this problem I'm almost 37 and I was I played sports in high school college but my mind hasn't caught up with my body so like I'll be on the court and I still feel like I'm really fast agile flexible and I'll go to do certain things that my mind I'm like I can do that but then my body's like you're a fool man like you need to stop <laughs> You're gonna kill yourself or someone else, stop it. So I gotta get, get those caught up with each other. But we know the benefits of stretching, but we tend to skip it sometimes. And that's oftentimes how we approach prayer. We know that there are benefits in praying, that it prepares us, but yet we tend to bypass it and jump right into our day and skip it. And, if you, and another thing that I tend to do, if you show this picture, is this guy stretching. Everybody's seen this kind of guy at the gym. He's doing, like the human body should not do that. And so when I see this, I'm like, man, I can't do that. So I don't do anything, right? I just go play basketball with Randy. And so, but what I realized is that I don't have to do that. A little bit of prayer can go a long way. A little bit of stretching can make a big difference. And so the next point is that when we make prayer and stretching a priority, both stretching and prayer, they improve our posture and our alignment. And you might say, well, what does that have to do with prayer? When we improve our posture, there's a few things that happen to our body. First of all, it, redu it reduces stress and it increases energy. And so the same thing happens when we pray. When we pray, we're saying, hey, I'm, not, I'm, I'm renewing myself with energy because I'm not trying to do this in my own strength, but I'm now relying on the strength of the Holy Spirit. I'm getting my posture right, and I'm saying, God, I'm putting you above anything else. That's why often we see prayer illustrated as this kind of posture, where we're lowering ourselves to elevate God in our lives. And we're saying, I'm not going to do this in my own strength, but God, I'm going to rely on you. I'm going to put you where you need to be in my life. And so when we begin to correct our posture, it then leads to a correction in our alignment. And so what alignment does, when we get our bodies to align right in the natural, it causes our bodies to function the way that they're supposed to. And in the same way, prayer causes our spirit to begin to function the way that it's supposed to. I don't know about you, but it's hard to be the husband, father, human that I'm supposed to be when I don't have my spirit right. And so in prayer, I'm saying, God, I'm aligning my posture where I'm lowering myself and I'm elevating you to the right place in my life. And in doing that, it's going to help my alignment be aligned with who you want me to be and how you want me to approach the day. And in James, it says, I'm almost finished. Don't ring the bell. It says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. When we make it a priority to pray, to get our posture right, to align ourselves with the Holy Spirit, those are the kind of prayers where we begin to see God do incredible things in our lives. That's good. That's good. Write this down. This, this is important. Victory is experienced in battle, but it's determined in training. Victory is experienced in battle, but it's determined in training. I can talk about weightlifting and strength training. And how many of you know you have to start, you have to start somewhere, right? Yeah. You have to start small. You, you have the picture of the baby for me? You have to, you have to start small. <laughs> now, I, love, 
I love, I love the baby. And so if, if, that's, if that's starting with two pounds, you know, you start with the two pounds because I'm, I'm not going for bulk. I'm, I'm going for tone. Uh, <laughs> So, so says Michael Scott. But you gotta, but you gotta start somewhere. I mean, but you know, after the two pounds, then, then you can go, you go to the next place. And after that, because how many of you know when you go to the gym, comparison can get dangerous, right? Put that next picture up. If, if, if when I go to the gym, there's, there's some, no matter which side that you're on, you can be on the one side going, man, I'm so, I'm so glad I'm stronger than this other guy. You can be on the other side going, man, I'm, I'm so glad I'm not as weak as that guy. But comparison is going to lead to insecurity or it's going to lead to pride. Yeah. I know when I'm in the gym, there's sometimes I'm looking at somebody. I'm like, oh, man, I'm so glad I can lift more than that. And I look at somebody else and the guy is doing like walking lunges with a barbell of a weight that I couldn't even pick up. And so I know I've got to start somewhere. I can't compare, but I also know I need to train consistently. I can't just cram in one training session and expect to be ready. Uh, my buddy and I are getting ready to go to Greece in two weeks to go race in, in, in a Spartan race. And my goal when I'm training is to be prepared for obstacles no matter what they are. When the battle comes in your life, are you ready? Are you ready for those battles, for the unseen battles? That means we have to exercise our faith consistently or we might fail. Give me that last picture. Are we, are, when you set your... <laughs> Sometimes we're like, oh, I think, I'm, I think I'm ready for the big battle, but you're not ready for the big battle. You're taking on a lot more than you can. If you can't believe God that he's going to heal your headache, how are you going to believe him to heal something even greater? If you can't believe him to handle your utility bill, how are you going to believe for a new car for the house that you're believing for? I love what it says in James 1. I'm going to start in verse 3. It says, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I know it's real easy to focus on just those big battles that we encounter, but I think we often discount the small, everyday battles, the ones that can lead to bigger victories. And that's the daily exercising of our faith that we need. What are some small battles that you face every day that you can, man, if I can just have victory in this area, if I can exercise my faith here, I know that I'm going to grow in my faith. What temptation, what habit, what battle do you face? Can you overcome that battle for four hours, for a work day, for a week? Maybe that's, maybe that's food. You know, you're like a food and ice cream. You're like, I can't, I can go four hours. I can go four hours without this. Uh, maybe it's online shopping. Can you, can you go, can you go a week? Can you, can not a week. Can you go a day? Can you go a day without online? Can, can, can you go a day without online shopping? I'm sorry, that was, probably shouldn't have done that. Probably shouldn't have done. Can, you go, can you go a day without lying or maybe, maybe exaggerating or embellishing? Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's an alcohol abuse. What, what one thing can you exercise your faith in in a small battle so that you're prepared for the big ones? 2 Timothy 4.2 says, be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Continue to train for your next battle. Pastor Matt is exactly right. And one way to continue our training is to work on our mental toughness. So it's said that 90% of any uh, training or sport is mental. That's a big percentage. So today I want to talk about the two types of mental battles. Oh, is that me? Okay. <laughs> Two types of mental battles. One is our uh, self, so human reasoning. And the other is our spiritual battle or false arguments from our enemy. So it's important that we understand the difference. So one thing that I try to do is recognize if it's a fear thought, that thought is not from the Lord. It's either from me or from my enemy. If it's a lie thought about myself, maybe it's a negative thought about myself or it's a lie thought about somebody that I'm in relationship with, I know that that's not from the Lord. That's from the enemy. So I want to look this morning at 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 and 4. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. So I want to look at this phrase, we knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and destroy 
false arguments. So this morning, I want to give you a visual. How many kickboxers do we have in the room? Anybody? No. <laughs> well, this morning, we're all going to become boxers, okay? So when a fear thought comes, we have to knock it down. We have to knock it down. So sometimes what I do physically is I have a thought that's not lining up with the word. Maybe it's a thought about myself. And it's not lining up with the word. The word says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. So the thought that's not lining up with the word, I literally take my fist and knock it out. I want to give you something practical to do when you're struggling with your thought life. Because one thing that happens is when we think it, we act upon it. And then when we act upon it, we think it. And then we think it, we act upon it. And it's this huge circle. And we have to break the cycle of negative thinking and thinking on lies. So this is my main point. What do you have? Can I have the other microphone? So, oh, sorry, guys. Okay, so here's my main point. Knock out the lies renew the mind, surrender, and repeat. So here's what I want you to vision. In a boxing match, when the boxer has won, they hold up the, their fist like this, right? Both of them. This is a sign of victory. And in our spiritual life, surrender and victory are exactly the same. When we surrender to the Lord, we have our victory. So this morning, I want you to say it with me. Say, knock out the lies. Out the lies. Renew the mind. Surrender, Surrender. Repeat. repeat. Say it again. Knock out the lies. Out the lies. Renew, the Renew the mind. Surrender, Surrender. and repeat. repeat. All right. Next up, we want to talk about a workout partner. How many of you have been out, exercise, run, walk, and you've got somebody with you? Yeah, it makes a big difference. Uh, you know, if we go to the gym, and I was looking at these weights over here, and I think, all right, I've got to do some sets. Nobody's with me, so I'm not going to do those sets, <laughs> right? But if you have somebody with you, and you, okay, it's my turn, and I do my reps, and then I pass it to Pastor Matt. Well, I put some more weight on first, then I pass it to Pastor Matt. <laughs> he does some reps, and then what? Now it's my turn again. I do some reps, and then he does. What is that? We're working together, but we're both growing, right? And uh, so I want to look at this scripture in Ephesians chapter 4. Pastor Gene started here earlier, but we're going to pick up in verse 14. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they sound like the truth. Have you ever seen that before? Next verse. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of the body, the church. And then verse 16, look at this. It says, he makes the whole body fit together. Everybody say, fit together? He makes the whole body fit together as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow. It, let's, I'm going to say that again. As, as each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. You see that? So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So God has designed us to work together. He's designed us that as we have people around us, we are going to grow. And uh, so our main point today for, in your notes says when we partner with someone, it will cause us both to grow. When we partner with someone, we're both going to grow. And uh, so I, you know, being the nerd uh, guy up here, I was like, I'm going to go, is there like a natural study of how you can grow and go farther? And uh, Northwestern University, Michigan State University did a study on if you have someone with you, will you do more? And they call it the Kohler effect. And you can look this up later, but I want to show you this. It says gain is even more marked when they are part of a group working on a conjunctive task. And uh, so then they did this study. They had individuals on bikes, and they were riding their bikes. And listen to this. By themselves, they went one distance. But when they knew someone else was riding with them, they went 85% farther. Isn't that amazing? 85%. So as we put people around us, as we have people surrounding us, as you're in a small group and thrive or in, in a prayer time with somebody, or, or you have somebody that's challenging you, who do you have in your life that's going to say, you need to stop that? And you need to do this. Who's going to hold you accountable? Who's that person in your life that's going to help you? Because as you both do it, you're both going to grow. As you both challenge one another, you're going to grow. And uh, it was cool. We had a story come in, really a testimony from one of our leaders in Thrive. And they said, as I challenged others, 
and, and took the role of leader at the table. As I took that role, I thought, okay, it's my job to, to you know, challenge these other people. He said, but as I put myself out there and did that, then the areas that I was snagged in, the areas that I was stuck in, God started to move me. And I started to grow. So as we work together and we partner with one another, we're not only going to see growth in our own life, we're going to see growth in someone else's life, and then we're going to see growth in our own life, and then we're going to see growth in someone else's life. Amen. You know, <laughs> as I received the, uh, the word that we're going to be preaching together, um, I noticed that I had rest. And at first, I was a little offended. I'm like... <laughs> I work out, you know, I go to the gym, I feel like I'm active enough, but sitting in this hammock, literally my legs are asleep. I'm not complaining right now. This is kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. No, I'm just kidding. Let me get up real quick. Um, I have one point. We're good. We're good. I have one point. Let me go ahead and throw this out there to you real quick. It says, allowing ourselves to rest physically, mentally, and emotionally is vital to our spiritual growth. Rest. Y'all say rest. rest. Say it again. Say it louder. Say Rest. You see, any athlete's going to tell you that the key to their success in growing stronger and building muscle and allow, is allowing their body time to rest, to recuperate. I have a friend of mine who is a four-time collegiate powerlifting champion and a four-time junior USA powerlifting champion. I was talking to him the other day and just asking him, um, you know, what, what's key? What's, like, is rest important? And he said this. He said, daily physical training is stress applied to your body. Rest days allow your body to recover and rebuild from stress and damage occurred through daily training. You got ready for this next part? Sleep specifically increases important hormone production that facilitates the body's adaptive rebuilding response. Sleep. Y'all say rest. Rest. Rest is good. You see, and one of the mistakes we make as Christians, I do it too, is we get so fixated on Philippians 4.13 that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But we forget what, G what God did on the seventh day, that he rested. Yeah. We have to rest. We have to take time to rest. And I think Jesus knew this. In Mark 6, I feel like he knew this. See, let me give you a little context to where this is at. Someone came up to me uh, after first service, and he was like, man, that was really good. I didn't think about this, but Jesus is months out from, from being crucified and dying on the cross for us, and, and yet he still takes time to rest. He said, then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. Yeah. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his disciples didn't even have time to eat. So they were preaching, they were praying for people, and he said, you know what? We're just going to take some time, we're going to shut this down, and we're just going to go relax. We're going to go rest because it's important. Jesus knew it was important to rest. You see, we are most vulnerable to temptation when we are physically, mentally, and emotionally drained. The, most work, uh, the more workout load and, and stress that you accumulate to your body is almost an exponential risk of injury. You see, Preston Turner also said, he said, rest is almost equally important as the work you put in in order to improve. It's the process of stressing and adapting, and without the necessary time to rest and recover, the ability to improve and get better will be hindered. He said the more you work out, you have to balance it out with rest, because if all you're doing is working out and you're just going, 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 and you don't require time to rest, he said you're almost doing your body an injustice and more of an injury than actually helping yourself. It's important to rest. And then it's almost, an, it's equally important to rest mentally and emotionally. We have to rest in the promises of God. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We have to rest in the promises of God with that situation, that one thing that you just can't seem to get over. We have to rest in knowing who God is. And, and, and we've been practicing, me and my wife, we've been practicing our faith in prayer. And, and we stopped looking at the situation and being fearful. And we started looking and putting our trust and rest in God. Does that make sense? You have to focus, you have to switch your, your focus and put it in the rest in God that he is who he says he is and what the word says about how much he loves you, that he sent his son to die for you. He said you have to rest in that. When you start to rest in that, these things, that when they start happening in his time, will happen. It says in, in Acts 3, 19 and 20, it says, now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come. Times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. When we switch our focus and put our rest in Him, when those things come, 
Man, it's like, God, I knew you stepped up. And it's going to happen in his timing so that we know it's him. It wasn't that we did it. It's because he did it. Amen? Amen. Rest in him. Physically, rest. Take some time to play hooky for a little while. And then secondly, rest in the promises of God. Amen. Huh? Amen. Did you guys learn something? Would you give these guys a big hand? I want to... I want to brag on our team. We have a top-notch team, and, and we had a little fun today, but, but we are serious about what we're doing, and we want to stretch you, and we do want you to grow in Christ. And, and here's the reality of it, is the same that we do comparisons naturally, it's easy to do spiritually. And we see people, uh, yesterday my son and I did the incline, and, and, and I passed some people, and some people passed me. I could get jealous of those who are past me like, why, why are they cutting in front? Why, 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 I don't understand. Why, man, how can they do that? I don't understand why they can do that. And I mean, I'm meeting someone on the way down that passed me on the way up, and they're already coming back down. And, and I, I could get, but you know what? If I will train, if I will exercise, if I will flex and do and, and, and get my breathing and all of that, I can rise to that level, and the same is true spiritually. Let's not be jealous when we see somebody else's prayers answered, when we see somebody else get blessed by God, when we see uh, God do a miracle in someone else's life. Let's not get jealous. Let's get to the spiritual gym, and and let's start growing ourselves. Um, Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians 3. He said, I planted the seed in your hearts, And Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. And we have to take the living word of God. We started this whole series uh, six weeks ago, taking the seed of God's word and how some fell on the path, some fell among the thorns, some fell on the rocky soil, and some fell on the good soil. And so we want to have our hearts that are primed and and we're spiritually in tune and we're spiritually in shape that when we hear the word of God and it's planted in our heart it will grow it will bud and it'll bring forth a harvest and we will produce fruit in our lives amen will you guys stand to your feet with me I want us to pray heavenly father thank you for each and every one of these individuals and God we all know the areas where we're a little flabby we're spiritually soft, and we could, we could use some, some tightening up of our faith. We could use some shoring up of, our, of our, our time and our devotion to you. We could spend a little extra time in the spiritual gym. But Father, I pray, I pray that we'll self-examine, self-assess, and put these self-controlled, self-disciplined things in place in our life so that we can become the, man of, become the man of God, become the woman of God that you have called, ordained, and anointed us to be. And so, Father, I release your Holy Spirit of peace, your Holy Spirit of love upon each and every person's life. And I want you just to let go of, of the busyness of the day and everything else, and I just want you to take 60 seconds and I want, you to, I want you mentally just to reach up. And I just want you to connect and have a moment with God. And whatever it is you need, He's here. He's here to answer. That sickness, that disease, that ache, and that pain, Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It was a, it was a sign of the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit that was to come. Just turn the sprinkler of God's power on on the inside of you. And that water of refreshing, that water of refreshing that Preston just talked about, the times of refreshing would come from the Lord. Some of you have been downcast. Some of you have just had a spirit of heaviness and you've just been weighted and and there's just been dark clouds that have tried to, to, to overtake you. In the name and the authority of Jesus, I command the darkness to depart. I speak peace 
in the middle of the storm. And I command the S-O-N, the sun, and the light of God to shine bright in your life, to bring you healing, to bring you deliverance, to bring you victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Do not let, do not let your sickness or your problem define you. Allow the word of God to define you. And he declares you're an overcomer. He declares you are victorious in Christ. He declares that you are triumphant and that there is nothing that is impossible unto you but just to put your faith in Him. And He said this, if you'll have the faith, the grain, the size of a mustard seed. The mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds known to mankind. You see, it's not about the size of our faith but the size of what we put our faith into. And all you have to do is come and you don't feel like you hardly have any faith and you just you just say God I want to believe help my unbelief God I I need you to work in my life and you cast your care upon the Lord and you put your small faith in him but he is the God that's a creator of the heavens and the universe he is the God that put the the Sun in place and the planets in orbit He is the one that created the stars, the animals, the planet, the sky, the the earth, the land, the seas, and everything upon them. He is that same God that loves you affectionately and wants the very best for you. If I can put it this way, the love you have for your own child, that you would do anything for them, multiply it times 10,000, times 10,000 and you've just scratched the surface of the Father's love for you. Addictions, habits, I speak freedom. Freedom over your life in Jesus' name. Freedom over your life in the name of Jesus. Don't let that thing define you. And see, it would be impossible. It would be impossible for most of us to come and just just pick up a couple hundred pounds and lift it over our head. But I think if you'll go ahead and look up here a moment, I think every person in the room could probably lift this two pounds over your head. As Pastor Matt shared, I'm going to walk in freedom over this habit and addiction for one hour. I'm going to walk in this habit and addiction for one day and you start flexing your spiritual muscle. You see, to, to say, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lift this, I can do it for a whole week, it's too much. Just say, today. It's for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As to me and my house, we're gonna walk in victory today. I'm not gonna worry about tomorrow, I'm not gonna try and lift next week, I'm just going to lift today. One day at a time, and put your trust in Him. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big shout and some praise. Amen. Hey, before we go, before we go, I want to ask each one of you to judge your heart. We're not here to judge you. We're not here to condemn you. We're not here to to evaluate you. The Bible says that we're to judge ourselves. And when you look in your heart and you judge yourself, and am I worthy to go into the presence of God? Am I worthy of going to heaven? If you judge yourself and the gavel comes down and you judge yourself guilty, there's a higher power and there's a higher court than yours. And his name is God. And he is the ultimate judge. And he brings his gavel down and he declares you not guilty. He declares you innocent. He says, you're innocent. And he said, the crimes that, that, that you have committed, the, 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 the charges that are against you, I abolish them and I remove them. Because another man has stood in your place and he's taken your punishment. And he's gone to the grave and he's died and he's gone to the grave and he's resurrected and his name is Jesus. And it's through Jesus Christ that you have the freedom. You are free to go. But all you have to do is to say, yes, God. I want that freedom. And the chains and the shackles that have bound you will be loosed. All you have to do is say, yes, God, 
I want your freedom. On the count of three, I want you to be very bold and I want you to raise your hand if you say, Dean, I need God's love and God's forgiveness. I need a a fresh start. I need a do-over. Whatever it is, on the count of three, you're going to raise your hand. Someone will come and pray with you right where you stand. This place will rip, roar, and shout for you because we're proud of your decision for Christ. Here we go. One, come on, do it. Two, Let's go. Three, raise those hands really, really high. Anybody in this place? One back over here. God bless you. Way to go. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen, amen, amen. Come on, ladies. Amen. Anybody else? Thank you for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed the service. If you live here in Colorado Springs or you're going to be in the city, I hope that you'll come and experience the service firsthand. And for those of you that are enjoying the ministry and you're being fed to on a weekly basis, I invite you to partner with us financially and make an investment into the mission and the vision of Rock Family Church. And lastly, if you've never made a commitment and a decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, would you make that decision today? Why wait till tomorrow? Why wait till next weekend? I dare you to pray this prayer with me. Would you close your eyes? Would you pray this prayer with me and repeat it? It goes like this. Pray this with me. Say, dear God, forgive me of all of my sins and mistakes. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I invite him to be the Lord of my life. Thank you for loving me and forgiving me. My life is now in your hands. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. Hey, thanks for making that commitment. Will you email us at info at rockfamilychurch.com. Tell us about your new decision to stand up big and live strong for Jesus Christ. We'd love to celebrate with you. God bless you guys. We'll see you next weekend.